that. <clears throat> we'll turn to John chapter 1 in your Bible this morning. John chapter 1. We're also going to go to Genesis chapter 1 as well, just briefly. And I will start in Genesis chapter 1. And then we'll go to John chapter 1. Good to see you this morning. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. We are in the right place. We're in the right place this morning. So please uh, stand with me this morning. If you will. You ready? Stand with me. Let's start in Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. John 1. In the beginning, the Word was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. Down to verse 10. He was in the world, and though the world was made through Him, the world did not recognize Him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children born not of natural descent or of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and the only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Thank you. Please be seated. Pray with me this morning. Father, we thank you for your word. Pray that you send it forth this morning. Move the messenger out of the way, Father. Unimportant. The message is, and we ask that you send it forth to your people today. It's only you can. Father, we love you. We praise you this morning. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We welcome back Mary and Tom Paul. Wow. Congratulations again. And good to have you home safely. And we're just excited for you. Praise God. We also have some great news. Vincent and uh, Melissa and Mary. And uh, their husband and wife are married on March 5th. And we have little Berkeley in the house this morning. That's great. Berkeley, good to see you again, sir. Is he walking yet? <laughs> big boy, big boy. Praise God. I've been uh, praying about this for some time. Uh, just back and forth in my mind's eye about what God would have us to do. Creation and evolution are very important topics, obviously. And uh, I need to share a good word with you this morning. Most of us in this room, most of us, have been uh, taught about evolution as fact. We've been taught about evolution as it's, it's all true. Evolution, Charles Darwin, the brilliant mind that he is or was, and it's all true. Well, I'm here to share the truth with you this morning. Now I wouldn't mind if you shoot at the messenger, but you better hit him. You better hit him. I know where most of you live. <laughs> I know where most of you live, so you better hit it the first time, or at least second. But I'm here to tell you the truth this morning. I read a great article in the Baptist Banner just a few weeks ago by Dr. G. Charles Jackson. The title of that article is Top Ten Reasons Darwin is All Wrong. I'll read a little bit to you. I'm not much on reading to folks, or really not, but just bear with me this morning if you would. I'd like you to get this CD and share it with young people. Share it with young people who have been so confused by creation. Where are the dinosaurs? You come next Sunday and I'll share with you where the dinosaurs are placed in history. We'll place those dinosaurs right where they belong. Not in Jurassic Park. That was a movie. Three of them, five of them, how many, but we'll place the dinosaurs right where they belong. There is no prehistoric anything. Everybody okay with that? Let's just strip the veneer off this morning and get down to facts. Here's one fact. 
spontaneous generation. You folks remember that didn't skip biology like preacher did on a few occasions. <laughs> but if you didn't skip biology, you were there and they told you about spontaneous generation. Listen carefully what Louis Pasteur, great French Christian scientist, said in the 1800s. Never will the doctrine of spontaneous generation recover from this mortal blow of a simple experiment. No, there is no circumstance now known in which we can affirm that microscopic beings came into the world without germs, without parents similar to themselves. That is Louis Pasteur addressing the French Academy of Science in the 1800s. Wow. The how part has listened to Paul Davies in The New Scientist in 2003. The how part has everyone stumped. No one knows how lifeless chemicals organize themselves into the first living cell. Paul, I got great news for you. We can help you, Paul, if you want to be helped. But you see, now evolution, the evolutionist, it's a religion. It is. It's a form of a belief system. And it's here to challenge Christianity. It's not here to challenge Islam. But no big deal. What is Satan about? He's about attacking God's people. And he's going to attack you with falsehood. Many times it's going to sound so good. It sounds like it makes sense. Let me, let me share with you this morning. Everything that makes sense not, doesn't necessarily make sense. I'm not speaking in circles. Men, and you're married to a wife. Bro, let me tell you, she don't make sense. <laughs> Why? Oh, we're equal opportunity employers here at Hardest Central Baptist Church. Trust me. Wives, look at that husband. You look at him and go, Lord, have mercy. He don't make sense at all. <laughs> great scripture says this. Love covers a multitude of sin. Man, isn't that great? Love covers a multitude of sin. Let's read on. The chemical steps that led to life on earth remain a matter of intense speculation. Article, geochemical influences of life origins evolution. No? No debate. I don't know what the problem is. The problem is they want to believe that. You ever met somebody and they believe something wrong? Hello? Yes. See, the, the, before you jump on them, you and I believe something wrong at one time in our lives. Before we accepted Jesus Christ, we were all wrong. Heading okay. down the wrong road, the wrong road that leads only to a place called hell. Until someone prayed for us, shared Christ with us, and we accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. Amen. And please don't put Jesus along these other things. Too many of us sitting here this morning have Jesus along with evolution. We have Jesus along with all of our other beliefs, our cultural background, our education, and all that. My dear friends, he will not stay there. Amen. He is either Lord of Lords and King of Kings, or he is nothing. Amen. And it's your decision. You decide. I appreciate Joyce putting that sign up for us over the weekend. Man, that thing kept rolling and rolling. It was good. I even come down here to check on it, make sure it's rolling. <laughs> and it was rolling. I want everyone to hear, not a preacher, not a church, but I want them to hear the truth because most of the people behind my generation have been inundated with a lie. In order for Darwin to be right, the most solid law of biology would have to not be right, the law of biogenesis, often called the cornerstone of modern biology. We can't have it both ways. We even had this thing that crept into the church, and we've had the Pope to recently say, and I hope I'm going to quote him best I can, the Pope, the leader of the Roman Catholic Church, that so many Roman Catholics See him as God on earth. Well, that's what they view him as. He even said recently that evolution 
was the method that God used to create the heavens and earth. My dear friends, you don't, you don't know God too well, does he? I might just be a good old country boy from Verona, but I'll tell you one thing. I know God, and I know He's capable of anything He says He's capable of. I'm going to share some scripture with you from Psalm in just a moment, and you'll see the book of Psalms. Wow, that great passage. Got to get ahead of myself. Sorry. <laughs> Got to jump up on this one. It is awesome. God says, do you not know? Do you not know that I am He that created all of the universe? all of the stars and I brought them out and I named every one. Charlie Darwin, jump up on that one, brother. Oh, evolutionists, hey, handle that one. You see the law of biogenesis in the natural law of science. See, Darwinism is not science. It's religion. <laughs> you say, no, you're confused. No, I'm not confused. I know what I'm talking about here. And when I stop knowing, I'm going to sit down and be quiet. Trust me. But I know this one. And Darwin, even at the end of his life, retracted. I'm, I must have been wrong. Let me share with you a little bit more. Prokaryote and eukaryotes, gradual accumulation of mutations, is never the way they evolved. The Cambrian explosion was caused by symbiosis not by mutation. You see what the evolutionists were saying? It's mutations that cause all down through the millions and billions of years, mutations brought us to you. I don't know about you, but let me, let me ask you a question. If you're kin to monkeys, <laughs> if you're from a monkey, why we still got monkeys? You ever thought about that? You haven't thought about that. You ride down the road calling somebody else a monkey. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you and I are from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? And it goes against evolution anyway, if you think about it. It goes against what they basically want us to believe. This missing link, let's touch the missing link for a moment that is second only to the origin of life in the nightmares of evolution believers. How did bacteria turn into cells hundreds of times bigger than themselves? In which things inside them like the nuclei, the nucleus, and the organelles evolved? They didn't evolve. There's one giant total blank in the evolution story right there. Evolutionists will tell you and teach you that mutations did it all, but there is no way to even imagine how mutations could ever create new and organic genetic information that would be needed to jump from bacteria to cells, complex cells like amoebas, and just the cells that are within your body. Ladies and gentlemen, you are made up of billions of cells. All kinds of cells that are within your body, and the brain cell is different than the skin cell, and different from the cardiac cell. However, and I'll go DNA next week a little bit with you, but just a, just a sliver of DNA this morning, DNA has proven evolution totally wrong. Totally wrong. No, no way that... And, DNA of a fish is DNA of a fish. DNA, and they're sometimes similar to animals, but you and I, as believers, should know that we're created in the image of God. Changes everything. Changes everything. Because God first loved you, you have the capacity to love. You have the capacity to love. Some of us haven't opened ourselves to God enough that allows Him to love through us because of our experiences in life. We may have been betrayed. We may have been abused. All verbal, sexual, whatever, emotional, whatever it is, and we're unable to love. You come to Christ and surrender that to Him today, my friend, and He will forgive you, cleanse you, and help you to be all that He intended you to be. 
That's what he wants to do. Back to our script, Cambrian Explosion. Most of us in science will remember that. If you don't, don't worry about it. I had to go back to it, trust me. Cambrian Explosion changed everything. The fossil record causes Darwin more grief than anything else. Nothing distressed him more than the Cambrian Explosion, the coincident appearance of almost all complex organi organic designs. Stephen J. Gould, in his book, The Panda's Thumb. What is that saying? That's saying in geological evidence. You know what geology proves? There was a flood. You know what the geological record proves? Some people say, oh, it was just a local flood over there where Mo, um, you know, Noah was, and it just kind of was around him, and I was, oh no. Oh no, my dear friends. Geological evidence of strata after strata after strata after strata showed that there was a worldwide flood. Worldwide flood. And Jesus, our own Lord Jesus, said this about Noah. He was a preacher of righteousness. And just as in the days of Noah, so shall the culture be when I return. They will be marrying and giving in marriage. They'll be eating and drinking and going on with their lives. And yet when the door is shut, do you know that Noah's ark, God left the ark door open for seven days. Why did God leave the door open seven days? You ever seen the ark? I don't mean the original. Some of us not quite that old. <laughs> relax, relax, it's okay. Did you ever seen the replica Lord of the of Noah's Ark? There's one over in Amsterdam. There's one being built in Kentucky on the border of Ohio. Thing is big. It's big. It's beyond big. 550 feet long. More than 300, three football fields long. More than that. Five, seven stories high, depending on how you measure. Plenty of room is where I'm going. And the Lord opened the door, left the door open. Upon God's instruction, Noah left the door open for seven days. And anyone who he had preached to, Jesus said, he was a preacher of righteousness. Anyone who he had preached to could come on board and live instead of dying. And you know the biblical account. He, his wife, three sons, and their wives. And next week I'm going to show you a little bit about how all men on the planet today have come from four, four, is it genomes? Four basic people on the planet Earth. And I'll show you next week. You need to be here. Oh, I'm going to do that too. So yes, I'm going to do that too. <laughs> yes, I am. Darwin noted in the origin of species the abrupt emergence of arthropods in the fossil record during the Cambrian presents a problem for evolutionary biology. No kidding. Right? <laughs> the creation model says that all life forms were created in the same week. Wow. Evolution says that it took three and a half billion years. What do we find in the deepest layer that contained fossils? Just bacteria. In the deepest muds of today, what do we find? Just bacteria. <coughs> what do we find in the fossils above the bacteria? We find representatives from every phylum of living organisms, even the vertebrates. Back on. Even those, the sudden boundary line of so many living things with no missing links leading up to them only goes with the creation model and only goes against the evolutionary model. The data, my dear friends, the data proves Darwin is wrong. <clears throat> Go over in that psalm passage with me. Psalm 102. Wow, what a great psalm. All of them great, but wow. What an awesome thing. Psalm 102, verse 25. Psalm 102, verse 25. You there? All right. You there? Hang with me. Golly, where's this guy going? 
I'm going to heaven. You want to go? Yeah. Praise God. Come on, let's go. In the beginning, speaking of God, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are work of your hands. They're the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment, like clothing. You will change them, and they will be discarded. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. It's a great thing. Somebody's telling me the other day, we're going way out there somewhere to heaven. You know that heaven's coming here? Hello? Bible students? Yep, heaven's coming here. We're not going to need a space suit. Thank God. I mean, I did in one. Thank God. Wouldn't that be a tragedy? you the last one we got one space suit that doesn't fit you. <laughs> wouldn't that be sad? I mean, wouldn't that just be tough to deal with? What they go away? As they float away from you, wouldn't that be a bad day or what? But see, God's already provided. God is our provision. God is our Jehovah Jireh. God is our Jehovah salvation. He is the true and living God. And there is none like Him. Praise His holy name. Look over in Isaiah chapter 40 just for a moment. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. You hold right there, and we're going to look back at a couple of things. She's in 1859. The number of intermediate varieties in the evolutionary scale, coming from slime to humans, or age to humans, whatever. You with me? Which must have formerly existed on the earth, must be truly enormous. Why then is not every geological formation and every stratum full of such intermediate lakes? Question? With the question? If it's true, why, why doesn't the data, why doesn't the strata of all the geology on the planet say that? Wow. Geology, Mr. Darwin said, assuredly does not reveal any such finely graded organic chain. And this perhaps is the most obvious and gravest objection which can be urged against my theory. See, Charles Darwin was the right man. You know anything about him? Google Charles, Charles Darwin. You'll see that his brother was an alcoholic, which is okay. He wasn't recovered, though, which is not okay. He was a drunkard in those days, what they would call, and he hated the Catholic Church, and the Catholic Church kicked his brother out, and Charles Darwin got married, mad at the Catholic Church. He said, I'm going to go out and prove these knuckleheads wrong. He hated God. He was against God because of what man did. Are you sitting here this morning in that same spot that some person has hurt you and you're mad at God? Have you ever lost someone and blamed God, haven't you? Been there? I have. Lost my sister when I was about 12 years old. And I, you know, God didn't do anything. Why didn't you do something? Why didn't you do something? Not realizing at the time God did do something. Had a relationship. Her life ended here physically, but her life goes on with Him. Amen. See, that life that just left here today, last week, 10 years ago, 6,000 years ago, Adam and Eve, this side of Adam and Eve, all of it, all of it, all of it has a chance for redemption. That's because of who God is. God is a redeemer. God will redeem your life if you let him. And which, ones, which way is it going to be? You can keep your hand on the steering wheel or you can let God. And I didn't say drive like that. I'm talking about the life here. Are you going to stay in control or are you going to get what it gives? But if you allow God to have your life, Jesus said it this way. A man who is going to hold on to his life shall surely lose it. But if you're willing to lose your life, then and only then will you find it. My dear friends, we're going to live forever somewhere. One of two places. Either in God's presence or cast out of His presence. And it's up to us. And I can only imagine, it makes me angry, how many 
have fallen for this evolutionary lie and have rejected God. We've got another plan going on over here, and we'd rather have that than you, God. That's what he's saying. That's what they're saying. All those little symbols on that uh, on those vehicles you see, do not rip them off. I was tempted the other day. <laughs> tempted greatly, but I said, no, I will not do that. Preacher locked up in Hannibal County for ripping off something of a person's car. I would not do that. Thank you. I appreciate your prayers. <laughs> that thing, it said Darwin. 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 That's the way it looks to Darwin. What, what, what type of preacher is that thing? You ever notice? Walked over near that car. No alarms went off. Walked over near that thing. I started looking at that car. I said, what is that? What, what, what is that thing? And you believe in that? And you look this morning and see a beautiful sunrise? And you see the snow fall? And you see the leaves come? And the gardens grow? And all the things that God's created? And you believe that? Amen. Come on now. My goodness gracious. But my problem is that sucked in so many very gullible people. Very young and impressionable people. Our public schools have been hijacked long ago. <coughs> long ago. And we have Christian teachers and godly people, men and women, still teaching in public school. I did for almost 30 years, which is awesome. I wouldn't trade that time for anything. Anything. There are lights out here. You're called to be a light. Teacher and coach, you're called to be a light. Billy Graham once said, they asked Billy Graham, Billy, if you didn't become an evangelist, what would you have done? He said, I'd have coached. Really? He was a pretty good baseball player in his day. Really? Why? He said, because that man, that woman, has those children right there, young people, so impressionable, you can lead them to truth if you will be willing. And you see, grannies and grandpas and moms and dads, you and I, it's up to you and I to make sure this generation and the generation that comes on behind us has truth. Truth. Truth will set you free. Truth is a person, my dear friends. His name is Jesus. The same one you have taken his name in vain for so long is saying, come unto me. Come unto me. Repent of your sin. Come unto me. Repent has to be a part of it. We're not doing cheap grace here this morning. We're not doing cheap grace where, oh, you just come when you want to. You're not coming to God when you want to, my dear friend. When God is calling, when the Father is calling you by the power of His Spirit after His Son has been presented, that's when you may come. But you're not just coming any day on your own. It's God involved. God was first involved in my salvation and yours. He has called us. He has made a way. It is God who is calling you this morning. It is He who is sitting on the throne in heaven as we speak this morning who is calling you, and he's calling you to come and be a part of his family. Isn't it great? Isn't it great to be a part of a family? Yeah, all them fruits and nuts. Yeah, you call them a monkey once or twice, but you love them, don't you? <laughs> hey, hey, you didn't choose who your mom and daddy were, did you? No take backs. No trade-ins. It is what it is. Word, you know the word says? Honor your mother and father. Now, adults, let me share this with you. You older adults, you need to hear this. Your adult children are no longer your responsibility. Except to one thing, pray. Oh, yeah, look at it. Pray. You're not that mom and daddy like that is. No, it doesn't work like that. That's not God's plan. That's the look in the book. That's why in the book we said just not long ago, man shall leave his mother and father. Cling to his wife. Cling to his wife. How's that husband and wife ever going to become one mother-in-law if you're in the middle of it? Amen. supposed to be the at-law, you're supposed to be the in-law.
mother-in-law. You be praying for those young people. You know what God has shown me? My baby girl and her husband, they're all married. That's great. If they ask me something, I'm willing to share. Otherwise, I pray. My, oh, do I pray. Stay out of their way. Stay out of their business. That's their business. Not my business. And if something goes down that I need to be involved in, I'll be there. No doubt about it. But I'm not involved in their business because you see, I want that husband and that wife and Jesus, I want them to grow to Jesus. And as they grow to Jesus, guess what? They become one. No interference from you or me. You, church, I, church, we're to be the encouragers, the supporters, supporters, the help. We're to be the folks that help lead and guide them to all truth. Not be busybodies. You don't know any nosy people, do you? <laughs> and can't wait to get your business. Hey, tend to your business. That's why God gave it. That's why it's called your business. You're supposed to tend to that. You're not supposed to get involved with other folks' stuff. That's why you come to me in counseling session will never be said to another soul, including my wife. I wouldn't put that burden on my wife. See, you, you don't do that. You got a problem you need to talk about, if you come talk to me, I'd be glad to talk. I'd be glad to listen. I don't, I don't talk a lot. I'll be glad to listen to you and help you along your way to Jesus. Not to Darwin. Not to falsehood. Not to lies. Not to Mormonism, not to Jehovah's Witnesses, not over to the Islam or the Buddhists or whoever. All that's going to go. Do you get it? That's why we study on Wednesday night. God's coming. He's purifying this earth. We're going to have a new heaven and a new earth, folks. It's coming. Be ready. Be ready. One last thing from the Darwin side. Everyone has turned, heard the term missing link. So many times we forget what it really means to us. <coughs> missing. It's missing. I remember 20 years ago, big news broadcast came on. Oh, they found the missing link. It's in France. I <laughs> uh, did an uncovered of arcade French fry or something. What, what is that? What, what, what is it? It's a tooth found out on a farm. And it's the missing link. It's going to connect all of Darwin's theories. It's true. It was all over the news. I'm sitting there in Judea. I'm sitting there a long time ago going, what? <laughs> Within three or four days, that was a pig of a tooth. I mean, a tooth of a pig. <laughs> pig farm, south of France. They dug up tooth of a pig. No missing link at all. Just a missing tooth of a pig. And yet that came, listen, it came on that TV like it was true. Came on that TV just like it's gospel. That's the problem. Missing links, my dear friend, it's still a missing link. Evolution requires this missing link, fossils, to be real. For the theory to have any proof from fossils, all arguing aside, there really aren't any missing links that have ever been found. Darwin followers have even quit trying to find the missing links, the land plants, and for so many kinds of insects. Stasis scientists, do you know what stasis means? Non-change. Non-change. The overwhelming prevalence of stasis became an embarrassing feature of the fossil record best left ignored as a manifestation of nothing that is non-evolution, Stephen Gold in Cordelia's Dilemma Natural History, 1993. Science proves, proves Darwin's wrong. Darwin's wrong. Listen, <coughs> evolution believers don't like to talk about this problem, so they usually don't mention stasis. The creation model says that all kinds of living things should stay pretty much the same up until the time they may go in, uh, extinct, excuse me, 
The evolution model says that all kinds of living things should constantly be changing. That's how worms turned into us. Oh man, I was a monkey and now I've been demoted to a worm. <laughs> the ancient coelacanth, that's a fish, is just one example. Its fins have small bones. And the evolutionists thought these might evolve into fingers by the time they would have evolved into us. Then we found coelacanths alive in the Indian Ocean. You know that under the two Antarctica and the Arctic and Antarctic, all underneath that ice, we don't know what's under there. We know water. We don't know all the life forms that are there. We don't know all the life forms that are there. And people come up and say, oh, well, gracious, we found this big elephant out in Kansas. Yeah, but no kidding. No kidding. We had an ice age after the Flood. Yeah, no kidding. Just listen, and we'll close out with this type of thing on the Darwin side. Berkeley, God bless you. I'm hungry too. <laughs> listen to this. They forgot one problem, the evolutionists. Coelacanth was supposed to be our great-grandfather. Why and how could this evolution of one fish turned into dinosaurs, birds, rats, elephants, seagulls, turtles, whales, horses, hummingbirds, and leave the coelacanth totally the same through this exact period of time. There is no answer except that Darwin is wrong. As a matter of fact, all life forms on the growing list of living fossils cause the same contradiction or an evolutionist, these living fossils have never changed, never evolved at all. The coelacanth that was found in the Indian Ocean looks just like the fossil record of the coelacanth of thousands of years past. They're overwhelmingly present in the fossil record. They are the rule, not the exception. Now that Isaiah passage, quickly. Isaiah 40, verses 21 and 22. And this is for you and I here today. The question is raised in Isaiah 40, verse 21. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits on the throne above the circle of the earth, and his people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent in which to live. Verse 25, God is speaking. To whom will you compare me? Who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look into the heavens. Who created all of these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls them each by name because of his great power and mighty strength. Not one of them is missing. And the psalmist said the same thing. Have we not learned you compare scripture with scripture? You do that, you'll get a greater truth. Greater, I don't mean truth is going to be greater like it changed, but it changed in us. You with me? Okay. Yes? yes? See, I, was, I had more revelation. God's revelation is enough. The revelation of His Son, Jesus Christ, is enough. Yes? yes? However, it's revealed in me. It's changed me. God changes not. But it's revealed in me and changes me. Verse 28, do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. That's the truth. Evolution is a lie. It's wrong. Doesn't make sense anyway. Does not make sense. But where my heart goes at 
is what I said earlier, to all those young people that have been confused down through the years, and some of you who may have a scientific background with your position, or something that you have to be doing, something you have to be doing, your career, if it involves science, you have been inundated with the evolutionary model. Can you imagine our public schools all across this great land called America cannot even put along next to the theory of evolution, the theory of creation? <coughs> Rejected by school boards time after time. Some teach it side by side, which God bless them, I applaud them. But do you see that that's a tool in the hand of the enemy? And you and I, as believers, we need to stand up. Stand up. Share with those around us. You know the old saying, well, hey, you got yours, and hey, I got mine, and you go get yours. That is not Christian at all. Dads, let me share this with you. My father never said this to me. And I thank God, my father in heaven, that he never said this to me. Do as I say, not as I do. Failure, guarantee you. Guarantee you, failure. That's going to be rejected eventually. Do as I, you, you, you and I have to set the pace. We have to be part of the solution instead of the problem. Share with them. We have cards on this back table. And I'm going to pray in just a moment. We have cards, truelife.org, 24 of the best videos, 10 minute videos that you'll ever see, and one of them, or two or three of them, but one of them deals with evolution, and will give you further, further evidence, further witness. Share this with those young people at school, or in your church if you're visiting with us, or in your community, or in your club, or in your scouts, or boy scouts, just share it with them, and invite them to that website, and they can go there and learn and grow and see the truth of God. That's what it's all about. Christian, how are you doing this morning? Where are you at with Jesus? Have you just gone and just kind of been off to the side recently? Do you need to rededicate your life to your calling today? Do you need, if you're sitting here and you're not a believer, do you need to come to Jesus Christ today and be saved? Today is the day. You need to move your church membership from somewhere else to here to come and get involved that we might see a revival here in Moriah. I'm not talking about some religious thing or some church thing. I'm talking about a Jesus, Jesus thing. That men and women, boys and girls in this community of ours come. Come to know Jesus Christ. Surveys say today... 80-some percent of Americans are Christians. I beg to differ. I beg to differ. Can't be. We wouldn't have room to float. If 80% of the riot, let's just go here where we've lived or where we grew up. <coughs> Don't be afraid to tell somebody you're from Ryan. <laughs> Thank God. It could be worse. It could be worse. Could be. Let's just think of 80% of all Viridians here. Where would we put them in? It comes worse. Amen. Let me down on the ground. My dear friends, as long as you and I have a breath, when Jesus is not returning, it's time to work. It's time to serve. Stop all that nonsense that hey, we will keep doing this and that and the other and this will change. It's not going to change until we change. Amen. Already since what God's called you and I for one thing, and that's to bring people to Him while we can. You come and pray for your lost loved ones today. Let revival break out in your heart today. You come and pray for those in your family that are lost. Don't be so ashamed. I wonder what so-and-so will think of me if I come down and pray. It doesn't matter what so-and-so thinks of you. Amen. 
God is calling. The Holy Spirit's moving here this morning. He's moving on your heart, your decision, your time. We're going to stand in just a moment and sing a hymn of invitation. You respond to God today. Whatever it is. Stop hanging out there, periphery and all the fringes. Get in the game. Come on in and let's go to work. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Father, I thank your word is true when man is a liar. That's the Apostle Paul speaking so many centuries ago, Lord. And let all men be a liar and you be the honest one. We praise you today that you are honest. We thank you that you have put your truth in our lives, O oh Lord. That we now can be honest men and women on mission with Jesus to bring others to a saving knowledge. Father, during this time of invitation, stir your people. Stir your people today. For it's in Jesus' name we pray.